Suleiman Ak Osman's voice carries the memories of a forgotten time. But the past is always present for the musician who was born a few years after the Turkish peace operation in the island of Cyprus. When I play my music, I don't believe that people look where I come from or even what I look like. So I am born here, I am a living being, and I exist, but people deny that I exist. The Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus came into existence in 1983, nine years after the Turkish armed forces intervened following a coup staged by Greek Cypriots. The push was meant to unite all of Cyprus with Greece, in violation of a 1960 agreement to maintain Cyprus's constitutional order. Turkey said it had a duty as a guarantor power under the agreement to protect all Cypriots, including Turks. It ended up dividing the island along ethnic lines. 45 years since the Turkish armed forces intervened in northern Cyprus, the island remains divided. In fact, the area I'm at is on the Turkish Cypriot side. There is a buffer zone that has been controlled by the United Nations since 1974. It's an area that neither Turkish Cypriots or Greek Cypriots can enter. Suleiman Erguçlu was 20 years old in 1974. He said he had different dreams then, but was forced to pick up a gun. I was afraid of being shot and killed. There were people shooting at me. What do you mean, what? I mean, there was a war. And, and that's why I was shooting at them. And now, the stability of the region is once again threatened, as a scramble for energy resources is underway in the eastern Mediterranean. The hydrocarbon-rich waters are divided into so-called exclusive economic zones. Greece and Greek-administered Cyprus, backed by the European Union, say they're legally entitled to these zones. But Turkey disagrees, laying claim to these zones on behalf of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, a country only Ankara recognizes. And to stake its claim, it has already sent two giant drill ships in these waters. The drills on the Fateh and Yavuz can reach up to 40,000 feet below sea level. Escorting them are Turkish battleships, a precautionary measure according to Ankara. Turkish Cypriot is lucky on this side because Turkish foreign policy is very strict. Turkey stands very strict and they said they, we support Turkish Cypriot position and we will fight for their rights. The Greek Cypriots recently rejected a Turkish Cypriot proposal to negotiate access to potential hydrocarbon deposits, a move Turkey says will further aggravate the possibility of a political settlement. They have been negotiating with us the solution of the Cyprus problem for, uh, for more than 50 years, and they say that they cannot negotiate with us the hydrocarbon issue. So the question is, what's the difference between the two? If we solve the Cyprus problem uh, uh, by negotiation, it will cover the hydrocarbon issue as well. So that means that we are entitled to discuss the hydrocarbon issue as well with them because it belongs to both of us and we are the co-owner. But the scramble for energy in the eastern Mediterranean is as much a game of chance as it is of strategy. Serdan Hoca, who has represented Turkish Cypriots in negotiations with the Greek side, says success or failure might come down to luck in finding treasures hidden in the seas. The new conundrum is who is going to dig, where they will find, and how much will come out. I mean, I've been telling until five years ago, Cyprus problem was a chess game. Now it's a backup. Anything, any find of 10 trillion cubic feet will change everything. Or any find of 40 trillion 
like one find like uh, in Israel or especially in Egypt, will change every single aspect, so we will have a new paradigm in Cyprus. The horizon of the coast of Cyprus is rapidly changing, and the scramble for energy between regional rivals in the Mediterranean is creating more uncertainty on the divided island. Ali Mustafa in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus for Straight Talk. <laughs>